people of Guyana to discuss um, you know, what is happening in our country as we hold the government accountable for their actions. Um, you know, on a daily basis, we are seeing so many things happening, um, so many things that I don't think we're really surprised about, but um, so many things you know, that uh, make our hearts bleed as a result of the coalition government and the things that are happening in our country. Those of you joining us on Facebook, we want to say good evening to you. And the folks who are joining us on Freedom Radio as well, uh, we want to say a very good evening to you. What we're going to do a little later in the program, we're going to take some calls. Um, to hear from you as usual as uh, how we do things and those of you who would want to um, you know make a contribution you can you can call and those of you who um, are viewing us on Facebook you can what you can do is that you can join us um, and of course send us your messages all right so this evening um, you know we want to talk a little bit about um, what are our plans uh, in the people's progressive party uh, to take Guyana forward you know we have seen uh, the mistakes the missteps um, we have seen the high level of corruption, we have seen the mismanagement, we have seen the nepotism, we have seen the cronyism in the APNU AFC government, and it's about time we change all of that, you know, and we take our country um, forward. We are seeing um, only recently we saw again ExxonMobil talking about uh, further oil discovery. Our concern, however, remains that you know, absolutely no plan by the coalition government to manage our. Um, oil resources in, in a manner in, in, in which all of us as Guyanese will benefit. We haven't seen anything from them. There is no local content policy in place. Um, there is no legislation in place to, to protect um, our resources. There is nothing in place in the event of an oil spill. So we have we've seen so many um, missteps uh, by this government. And I want to talk a little bit tonight about um, you know our plans as a political party, the People's Progressive Party Civic. Um, you know, Comrade Efren Ali, the presidential candidate of our party, uh, the opposition leader, Dr. Barat Jagdi, have been talking for a while now about some of our plans. And one of the things that we recognize in Guyana is the fact that a lot of our people, especially our young people, are jobless. Um, you know, you hear the argument, oh, the government cannot create jobs to you, but it is the very government, it is the very president who would have promised uh, Guyanese um, jobs, especially young people, you know, all the jobs for young people and so forth. We haven't seen anything so far from them. Uh, you know, after four years, you're talking about creating 126 jobs. 126 jobs in four years. <laughs> That is just above 30 jobs per year. Could you imagine that? Just above 30 jobs per year. So we want to talk a little bit about our plans um, as a political party. It is a little bit of a sneak preview into what we are, um, you know, we will have in our manifesto, and we are just awaiting the ruling of the. Carbon Court of Justice. Um, we are confident that the CCJ will rule in our favor and to validate, for the validate, you know, confidence motion which was passed on December 21. I want to talk a little bit about um, about 12 things that we have highlighted um, so far, but there are many others going to be in our manifesto. And um, we all know that this government has failed miserably when it comes to titling of Amerindian lands. You know. Um, they haven't titled a single piece of land. Matter of fact, we had a minister saying that the the Amerindians are greedy because they want more lands and all sorts of things. But under the People's Progressive Party, the next People's Progressive Party civic government, which will be as soon as we have elections in Guyana, um, we're going to resume land titling um, because that is an important aspect of um, you know, the Norway, most of you know about the Norway fund, the 250 million US dollars um, over a period. So we want to restart that to ensure that our Armenian brothers and sisters benefit the way they were supposed to benefit um, from our country. And that is just one aspect of how we intend to deal with the issue of lands. Because we can tell you, we have a plan that where we intend to uh, create and to, to develop and distribute at least eight to ten thousand house lots yearly. And the first five years, you're talking about between forty to fifty thousand house lots. This government has failed miserably. Not a single house lot. Whatever they are trying to give out now are house lots that um, were left by the PPP on the um, Comrade finale when he was Minister of Housing, he would have developed a number of housing schemes. Um, under the PUP, you had over 40 to 50,000 house lots distributed to Guyanese. 
poor Guyanese, you know, were able to access a house lot. I'm seeing now that they're talking about they have, a, uh, you know, I think what they said, 1800 or something like that, or, or they have some house lots in 18 months. People are gonna get that. Now, what happened for the past four years? All of a sudden you realize that you can develop house lots to give to, to Guyanese and, and the prices I understand is exorbitant. There, there are a host of issues at the Ministry of Housing, the Central Plan Housing and Planning Authority. We've seen what the, um, the whole issue of conflict of interest um, and what I would want to call nepotism there, where the minister's husband is um, getting contracts from the ministry. I'm seeing now that the staff of the ministry are signing as witnesses um, on contracts with, sub, with subcontractors for the minister husband. Uh, we, are, we are hearing that the staff of the ministry, the Central Housing and Planning Authority, are drafting the contracts for the minister's husband and his subcontractors. So we know all the issues there. I think the minister is more preoccupied with getting jobs for her husband as against um, you know, really serving the people of Guyana. As uh, uh, the PPP civic government, we are going to ensure that we create um, house lots for people. But I want to uh, talk a little bit and spend some time on talking about jobs. Because, like I said, this government promises Guyanese, um, you know, all the jobs, so jobs for young people, jobs for youths, and so forth. And when the president himself was questioned about um, these jobs, he said, oh, uh, the government is not in the business of creating jobs, go and, and, and make cook up rice and fry planting chips and, and sell. So that is the kind of government we have. Make a whole host of promises to people, then when it's time to deliver, it is a different story. But under the PPP, uh, Comrade Irfan Ali, uh, the opposition leader, would have spoken extensively about us creating 50,000 jobs. 50,000 jobs for young people or for Guyanese at large um, within a five year period. We're talking about probably about 10,000 jobs per year. And I'm hearing people saying, oh, that is unrealistic. It is, you know, a uh, promise, just a promise, and so forth. But we have the resources. Nothing is happening in our agriculture sector. Rice has been destroyed. This government fired thousands of sugar workers, closed down estates. No support for cash crops. I, I hardly hear anything about livestock. So... We, we have industries, we have sectors. If you remove oil and gas, we have enough that can create probably about 30,000 or more jobs uh, for our young people or for our, for, for, for our Guyanese. But the government is only focused now on oil and oil and oil and oil. Oil is good, but you cannot neglect the other sectors because what's going to happen is that we're going to end up in a situation like many other countries with the Dutch disease where we put all our focus on oil, we neglect the other sectors, we don't develop them, we don't create jobs in them, we don't create the expertise necessary in those sectors. And when the price for oil drops and there are issues with oil, then our economy face a lot of problems. So by redirecting, reorganizing, reorienting our spending with our budget, by directing the oil resources in the right place, by ensuring that we develop and expand and grow the other sectors. The ICT sector is a major sector in our country. Setting up a few hubs here and there will not solve the problem, like this government is doing. Setting up a few hubs will not solve the problem. So we can create jobs in ICT. We can create jobs in agriculture. We can create jobs in tourism, the tourism and hospitality sector. We can create jobs in the oil and gas industry. We can create thousands of jobs in the service sectors. And if you take those alone and look at them, you're talking about more than 50,000 jobs. You're talking about more than 50,000 jobs. Ask yourself every day, all the young people who are leaving University of Guyana, all the young people who are, who are writing CSEC and coming out with 10 subjects, 12 subjects, what are they doing? Where are the jobs for them? Now you're seeing the government running all over the place, holding uh, job fairs, going into Armenian communities and give out grants, uh, going to the people in Barbies. By the way, they failed in Barbies. The people in Barbies sent them, them a strong message by rejecting them at that um, multi-million dollar, uh, bringing the government to the people. Um, it failed. Guyanese didn't show up. Barbicians didn't show up because Barbicians recognize that all this government is doing 
is making promises. They made a list of promises to Guyanese in, in 2015, and they failed on all of them. Not a single one. They can boast about the achieving anything in that. Now they're going back to people to tell them to give them to make new promises to them, you know, so that we, hoping that Guyanese are that, you know, naive to believe them. We are smarter. So I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, you have to, when you're going out there to vote, when you're going out there to vote, be conscious. Don't vote because your parents voted for a political party, your uncle voted for a political party, your friends are voting for a political party. Look at the policies, look at the program, look at the track record. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the track record of the People's Progressive Party on jobs alone. On jobs alone and the, and the investment that we created as a political party in this country and the jobs that were created out of that. And I can, I can count them on my finger quickly a few. The Marriott Hotel started under the PPP, completed under the PPP, opened under the PPP. Minister Bulkan and, and, and all of them, the PNC and the APNU and the AFC, protested that project. It's going to become a white elephant. They're going to turn it into a hospital. They're going to do all sorts of things with it. It's no good. Today, about 500 young people or Guyanese are working there. They're working there on shift. The very government is using that facility now they're boasting about it they're going there and they're you know taking all the pictures and all the the the, the, the photo ops and, and have them distributed to the media the marriott the same project that they criticized created hundreds of jobs for young people it's a private investment but it started under the pvp completed and opened under the pvp let's take a look at giftland thousands of young people working there because we created the, 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 the environment for investment, Giflan invested. And we've seen the kind of success there. Let us talk about the mining companies that came into this country, the large mining companies that came into this country, created scores of jobs for Guyanese, hundreds of jobs for Guyanese. Bosai, Bosai for example, about 500 jobs. Well-paid jobs, Guyanese are working there. And I can go on and on and on and on about the investment that we created. Movie Tongue, they, they criticized, they charged two of our comrades. Um, they charged Dr. Ashney Singh, they charged Winston Brassington for selling land below market value. Have them before the courts. Wanted to take back the land from, from, from the investor because they're claiming that the deal was corrupt and the investor got the land be below market value and a whole host of things. The other day when, they, when the facility was open, they showed up there all excited and, you know, to take pictures and hold pop uh, popcorn and, and, and so on to show that it's investment and they spoke glowingly about the investment um, environment that this investor came. That project is going to create scores of jobs. Already, a lot of people are employed there. And when that g goes into full bloom, it's going to create a whole host of jobs. So we have a track record. The People's Progressive Party, we have a track record of creating opportunities, not just for our young people, but for all Guyanese. Under the People's Progressive Party, you, you do the survey and see how many people own a vehicle. How many people own their own homes? How many persons were employed? Look at it. People were able to, to enjoy life. Today, they can't. They can't because what? Nothing is happening. No money is circulating. The business sector is suffering. Investments are not coming. I want to ask the APNU AFC government, any one of the ministers, I'm going to make this challenge to them, list one project, one major investment in this country since 2015. How many jobs were created? How much money was invested? Let us hear that from you. They can't. The Chedi Jagan International Airport, by the way, there was a whole host of problems there. Serious corruption, uh, changing the design, reducing the project. $150 million was, was, was earmarked for that project, $150 million US dollars for eight air bridges, a new terminal building. The AP and UFC government reduced the size. So we have four air bridges. 
they refurbished, rehabilitated um, the terminal building and they're paying 30 million US dollars more, from 150 up to 180 million dollars. What is happening? And that is the kind of corruption we're talking about in this country. The project on the, the, the Sheriff Street, the Mandela Road project, remodeled. Supposed to be open drains on the two sides. What they're doing now, they're putting down uh, plastic tubes, cover it. There is no way for the water to go. So what is going to happen? The people in, the, in those areas are likely, they're at risk of flooding. So they, 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 they reduce the scope of work and you're still paying the same, well, they're claiming that they're paying the same money. So we have to look, look around us and see what is happening. Anything that these guys put their hands on is because they are benefiting directly from it. They are benefiting directly from it. Let's talk about the, the, um, the new Demerara Harbor Bridge. Hundreds of millions of dollars being spent for a feasibility study. By the way, there was no public tender. Someone walks into the office of the minister, said, I have a feasibility study, a design. This is what the project is going to look like. The minister takes it to cabinet. Cabinet approved the contract. Cabinet has no power to approve contracts. They don't award contracts. They're, uh, if they want to give a no objection, as they call it now, noted. But they award the contract. They went ahead and paid, unknowing to the tender board. And this is not what I'm saying. This is not what the PPP is saying. A lot of people call it propaganda. Just go to the Auditor General's report. Just go to the report following the investigation by the Public Procurement Commission. It is all there. It is all there. So these guys, every single thing that they put their hands on is because they're benefiting directly. It's about corruption. It's about making money. That is what they're doing. They're not concerned about the people of this country. I can tell you that. They are not concerned about the people of this country. They are not doing anything for you. They are doing for their friends, their families, their cronies. That is all that is happening. They are doing that at the expense of the average Guyanese, the poor Guyanese. They are putting people out of jobs. Close to 30,000 jobs in less than four years. These guys fire people all over the place for no reason at all. For no reason at all. Look the other day, some ministers are resigning. They were able to, to say quickly, oh, we're going to get jobs to them. We're going to create opportunities for them. They're going to still be in government. They could find high-paying jobs. Hundreds of thousands of dollars for those, those ministers um, who, when they resign, will be in the government. But they can't find jobs for the, for the poor people. They can't find money to increase teachers' salaries. Teachers have to protest on the road. They can't find money to pay public servants better. They can't find money to invest in so many areas. And we, we don't want to talk about sport because I'm focusing a little tonight on young people and the promises that this coalition government made to you and how they fail you. Many of you may not want to come out and talk. Many of you may not want to accept the reality. But in your quiet moments, I want to encourage you sit ask yourself key questions am i better off now they promise change they promise a better life or what they call it a good life they promise a good life how good is your life today are you better off are you earning more are you even earning anything many of you are jobless many of you are jobless almost daily young people would call me to say uh, I really need a job. Can you help me? You go to the Escobar Coast and see what is happening. Go to Berbice and see what is happening. Go right in Georgetown here and see what is happening. Young people are without jobs. Matter of fact, not just young people. Many people of all ages are without jobs. People are not getting, they're taking back house lots from people because they are not constructing on those house lots. How are they going to construct if they don't have jobs? You're not creating the environment. The, the defaulting loans in the banks, the rate is so high that the banks are probably afraid now to, to give loans to people for, um, for housing. Those are the issues that we are facing daily. And you, as a people, all of us, we have to take stock of what is happening in our country. And we have to put a stop to it. I'm telling you, when you're ready to make a decision on a political party, ask yourself the key questions. 
What can they do for me? What is the track record of that party? They made promises in previous elections. Have they fulfilled those promises? And your answers are going to be simple. You're going to see it there. I'm going to take a few calls. Um, the number to call, it's on the screen, 233-2459. Good evening. Hello, good evening. I think I lost that one there. Yes, the number to call is 233-233, sorry, 2459. We want to hear from you this evening, um, you know, especially the young people. How have you been doing? Are you getting jobs? Are you employed? Are you getting opportunities to start your own business? Is there financing available? I want to hear some of these from you. Let us hear what you have to say. I want to hear from the housewives. How are you coping? I want to hear from the people in Wales. I want to hear from the people in Berbice, the people in Essequibo, the people in Linden. How are you coping? Are you getting money? Do you have a job? Good evening. Hi, good evening, sir. Good evening, brother. Um, I feel so good to get on with the program. Uh, what I want to know really, this on unemployment factors that I'm mean, really talking about, yeah. and the comparisons between governments and employment. Mm -hmm. But my, my own little synopsis tell me that it, it's not, no government at all worldwide can fulfill the employment of every citizen of that country. I agree with you. There are an unemployment throughout the world, right? And what I'm saying, before we sit and, and condemn each other, mm -hmm. why can't we work together? This country cannot go forward unless these two fractions of parties put their heads together to run this country. Because let us say, for instance, the PPP gets into power the upcoming elections. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happening from the other side is condemning the PPP rather than working with them. Mm -hmm. You're going to end up with the same problem year after year, decades after decade. The way to go is to get these two parties somehow before you're ready to mm -hmm. is to get them together to work. Because you cannot work without each other. If you plant the farm, you got the other side is most buyers of, of, of the farm you plant. Regardless of what you do, you, you cannot work without each other. So rather than sit and ridicule, sit and work out a system, encourage Guyanese to live as one, to live with love and unity. Not because of a political gain, you're ridiculing a party that, that, that you're lambasting them, right? These people is only there for three years, mm -hmm. and a 36 months old government, you cannot really see what progress is coming out of that. If they were in jail, let me say 10, 12 years, then, mm -hmm. then you had, had a right to, to really go to the extreme as, as you are going. Mm -hmm. But the point what I'm saying, the basic thing for this country is for these two parties that represent the two largest fractions of people in this country get together. If they get together, there's no business at all for this country at all. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for coming through. But I want to respond to a couple of things that the gentleman said there. And I, I keep hearing this argument of, oh, they're just in there for a few months, uh, just four years, just three years, and they can't if they were in there for 10 years and 12 years. They made promises to Guyanese. I believe political parties, if you're going to make promise, make a promise or make promises, make realistic promises to people. Look at their 100-day. Remember they did the 100-day um, the things that they, they, they want to achieve in 100 days, what have they done? And I want to quickly, before I take the next call, I will just want to focus, and we're talking about jobs. I, I, I agree with the gentleman that, of course, no government can create, can fulfill the employment demands of a country. But 126 jobs in four years, I don't know if that gentleman or any other guy needs to be satisfied with that. A hundred, and this is what the Department of Public Information released. This is not the PPP saying this. This is not Eddie Lane saying this. This is not Barajagdio saying this or Irfan Ali or any other leader in the, the PPP. This is what the Department of Public Information released. The other day they had a job fair. 700 people they claimed went there. That shows that Guyanese don't have jobs. 700 young people turned up there. How many of them got jobs? We don't know. Matter of fact, they made it clear that just about 200 will get jobs. So, but I want to go through this quickly. I spoke about the Marriott, Princess Hotel. Hundreds of young people working there, hundreds of people, Guyanese working there. 
project under the PPP. Qual Fund, constructed under the PPP. Thousands of young people working there. Teleperformance, constructed under the PPP. Over a thousand young people working there on shifts. The Giftland Mall, I spoke about that. I spoke about Movitam. I spoke about the large mining companies here. I spoke about the bauxite industry. I spoke about, and I want to talk about the construction sector, for example. And that is one area I didn't mention when I talked about what the PPP intends to do. Is that that alone can create thousands of jobs. Once you make house lots available, once you ensure that you work with the banks and you create the environment that loans are available for housing, then people are going to take loans, they're going to get house lots, they're going to take loans, they're going to build houses, and jobs are going to be created. You look at what is happening. Hardly any, anything in the construction sector, an area that has been creating thousands of jobs across this country, from Linden to Essequibo to East Bank to West Coast to East, to East Coast to Burbese, West Burbese, East Burbese, every single corner of this country, construction jobs were being created. We created an environment where the private sector was growing and expanding. More and more businesses were expanding, were opening, and creating job opportunities for our people. So you don't need 20 years to do this. You don't need 20 years to do this. You need common sense, and you need proper economic sense to create jobs. That is all. So to say that they're in there 36 months or 40 months or 20 months, it doesn't make a difference. They made the promises. They said to people that we are going to create jobs, that the PPBC were not giving you jobs, were giving jobs to their friends and their families. A total lie when you look at it. But they're in there now, and they have created 26, 126 jobs. You're talking about 31 point something jobs per year. In 52 weeks, 31, one, less than one um, job per week. Good evening. Good night, sir. Hi, good night, sir. Um, let me say something. This country was blooming, blooming. They had a lot of jobs, everything. Since this government go in, they destroy everything. Don't worry, people. They destroy this country and we need them out immediately. Right away, we got to get them out and take it back. Good night. Thanks, brother. Thanks for coming through. Yes, so 30,000 jobs gone under this government. I want to emphasize on this. I, I want to spend tonight to talk about jobs. I think that is a critical element in the day-to-day -day life. For happiness, comfort for any single individual. Jobs. Being able to earn to feed your family. Many of our Guyanese brothers and sisters are finding it extremely difficult to feed their, their, their family. That's the reality. There are people who with jobs, and you're going to hear the people with jobs are going to say, oh, I have a job, I'm working. But yes, you're working. But you're one in thousands that don't have jobs. Good evening. I think I lost that one here. Yeah, so let us talk about what the coalition government did. The only thing this government would have um, invested in and created is Durban Park. Highly corrupt. Can't account to $600 million. Highly corrupt, the Durban Park. That's the only thing they have invested in. Not a single job has been created there. Not a single job. That's the reality that we are facing, comrades. And we have, to, we have to recognize this as a people, that we need to ensure that we have a government in place that can take our country forward. A government that has the interest of the people of this country at heart and the People's Progressive Party Civic is the party that can form such a government. We've done it. Look across Guyana between 1992 and 2015. We've done it. You can see it. You can see many poor families were having a vehicle. They were able to go to the bank, get a small loan, buy a vehicle for probably $1.5, $2 million. Today, the restriction on vehicles has driven the price up so much that the man who works for $80,000 can't afford to go to the bank and take a vehicle. Because if you're working for $80,000 a month, you're paying $30,000, and this is, I'm just being generous here, $30,000 rent. You left with 50. If you have to go and pay $30,000 at the bank for a vehicle, you left with $20,000. You gotta get gas, you gotta get food, you gotta get clothing, you gotta pay water bill, and VAT on that. You have to pay light bill, and VAT on that. 
Tell me. Tell me if you can afford. When you were going, people were paying $20,000, $25,000 for a vehicle. People were able to go to the bank, get a small loan, build a house. The PVP Civic were building the low-income houses. Persons were paying down a $500,000 or $400,000, get a $1.52 million from the bank, probably pay $30,000 rather than pay rent with it, pay $30,000 um, to own their own home after a period of time. What is happening now? is that they're making duplexes. No land space, you can't plant any little garden or anything of that sort. So that is the reality. The reality is their thinking is misplaced. This government thinking is misplaced completely. They have no vision. They have no vision to take our country forward. So we have to, as a people, we have to recognize these things. And we have to recognize who exactly is doing the right thing for us. Who exactly has the interest of our people at heart? And I can say to you right off the bat that the coalition government doesn't have the, people, the, people, the, the people's interest at heart. See what is happening. Ministers getting contract, ministers, relatives getting contracts, ministers, the minister nephew is a driver, the minister uncle is a security, the minister auntie is the cleaner. That is what is happening. That is what is happening. And these people are being paid some super salaries while no investment is being made in areas that can benefit the average Guyanese. Good morning. Good, good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Not bad, brother. I, I, you know, I just want to do a little follow-up on the first scholar where you know what say that the government is young. I wonder if, if the people of Guyana is insane or me is insane because I can't see why people should starve their children give the government a chance. What kind of thing is this? I can't understand that. <laughs> you know, how people should supposed to stop their children and their family to give the government the next three years and the next six years while the government living happily. I don't understand that. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming through. And, and, and that's the point I'm making. Thank you God. don't have to bury your heads in the sand. You just can't say, oh, let's give them a chance while you're suffering. You just can't say, let's give them a chance when over three $3 trillion, I think it is, if, if I'm correct there, with budgets over the years. And there is nothing to show for it. The East Bank, East Coast, Four Lane Road, started under the PUP. Monies were already there for those. The airport started under the PUP. Money was already there for those, for that. So they didn't start anything. They spent one point something close to $1.6 billion on the, we call it, the Durban Park. That is a white elephant. They said the Marriott is going to be a white elephant. The Marriott is working. It's working. The Durban Park is the white elephant. They said that the National Stadium, Providence, is going to be a, a white elephant. The National Stadium is a world-class stadium that is hosting international cricket, international football, international events all the time. So let them come to you. They are coming to you now. They get this new love for you. They're coming to your community. You have to question them. You have to hold them accountable. Ask them what they have done for you. What I can tell you they have done for you is that they have added uh, VAT on your, your, your water, VAT on electricity. They've added VAT on basic items, baby items. They had added VAT on education, pressure, brace them. Look at it, what they have they done. At least 200 new taxes. They're taking billions of dollars. And a lot of people don't understand how when a government expands the tax net and include more taxes, how it impacts you. You don't see it, but when you look at it in, 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 a, in a holistic manner, then you recognize. Because every new item that they tax, they're taking money out of your pocket. So if you're gonna go and buy this laptop for $100, you used to buy it, you had $120, you had a $20 to spend on something else. You have to pay out of that $20 now, you're paying $10 in tax on this laptop. So it's $110, you're left with $10. So if the $20 used to buy food or used to buy something, pay electricity bill, and that is how they're taking the money. The finance minister and the AP and UAFC government is taxing the country into prosperity because we're not seeing the prosperity while they're punishing the people. 
Our people are suffering in this country on a daily basis. They are suffering. They can't make ends meet. There are many people who are losing their vehicles, they're losing their homes, they can't feed their family. So many things. Many of you are cutting into your savings to survive. Many of you who were able to save, to save under the PPP are now cutting into that saving to survive. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hi, good evening, sir. I'm calling from Rillsbury. Yeah, brother. There's no job at Rills. They spent 62 million that they had to go on rice. And of them, 262 million, they get um, 9 million in rice. This government is a waste. Brother Raymond Jackson said that they don't have the technical people to run this country. This is a bad food country. Government, this is a bad food government. The president said it must have bad food and we are fighting chips. The way he looked at him, he said he didn't kill them. He got me as his threat, get him very hard, you know. They don't see that they don't come and tell people nothing. The government is a big idiot. We don't want this school government anymore. They can't run the case check. Not just a country. They don't have the people. I have the money to put up the packet. Thanks for coming through. And that brother there is calling from Wales. And you hear what he is saying? It's simple. There are no jobs. There are no jobs. And the government is not going to them. Close the estate, left the people without jobs. And they're not going to them. They haven't designed any alternative to create employment for these people. The same thing they did to Burbies. That is why they were rejected in Burbies last week. Uh, well, well, on Wednesday, I think it was, or, or, or Tuesday, they went to Burbies. People didn't show up. Their few supporters showed up. I understand the Prime Minister sat there for <laughs> about three hours and probably four or five persons came to see him. Party supporters. Guyanese have rejected this government. And I call it all right-thinking Guyanese. All my Guyanese brothers and sisters, especially the young people, do not be fooled by the AP and UFC. They're coming to your communities. They're coming to you again. They came in 2015 and they made promises and you didn't see them back. They never came back to you. And I understand supporters of the party say you can't see them. You, you can't get to talk to them. They didn't want to see you then. Now that they're faced after the no confidence motion and they realize that their time is up. Time has catch up with them. People don't want them anymore. They're coming to you and they're trying to tell you they're going to do all these things. All the things that they're trying to do now and they're talking about doing now, they could have done since they got in there. But no, they were concerned about getting rich. That is what they were concerned about. They were concerned about themselves, their relatives, and how they can enrich themselves. The poor people, the Guyanese people at large, were not important to them. Now you're important because elections are coming. So you're important to vote for them now. Don't be fooled. The evidence is laying bare in front of you. It's there. You're going to see it. That they have done nothing for this country. Absolutely nothing apart from taking millions of US dollars loans that they can't show anything for, emptying the treasury, all the gold reserves, all the foreign reserves, all the monies that they collect every, every year, they can't show anything for it. They haven't done anything. Doing a few roads, streets here and there is not all that Guyanese want. Yes, they welcome the streets. And you start doing the streets after you realize that, you know, Guyanese are rejecting you. That is not all that Guyanese need. Guyanese need jobs. Guyanese need to live a decent, happy, and comfortable life. If they're doing this now with the resources that we have, ask yourself what will happen with our oil, oil resources, the revenues that come from oil. Because they already took 18 million US dollars and they were hiding it until it was exposed. Then they start talking about it. I'm going to take one more call before we wrap things up. Good evening. Hello, good evening. 
I think we lost our one there. Yes, we're almost out of time. But I'm saying, so there is nothing to show. We, as a people, it is about time. About time, we sit down, we examine this government. This government is a failure. The APNU AFC government is the most corrupt, incompetent government in the history of this country. The most corrupt and most incompetent in the history of this country. It's focused on enriching themselves, have absolutely no time with the Guyanese people, have absolutely no plan to grow the economy, have absolutely no plan to move the, the, the agriculture sector forward, absolutely no plan to create an environment that is conducive for investment, absolutely no plan to ensure that the people of this country grow, that there's growth financially and in all the other areas. No plan. This is a government. The operators they just jump in there and they sit down and then they say, well, we know what to do next. We're here. That's it. Right? We can get some money. We can get a pension. Uh, you know, that's all they're concerned about. All Nagamoto is concerned about is to drive around Georgetown and the East Coast and, and Barbies with 40 vehicles and a lot of sirens and, and wave hands and stop and give somebody a kite. After four years, then he realized that people need kites to fly. Children need kites. After four years, then they realize that they need to go to Barbies and they need to go to Essequibo and they need to go to West Coast and they need to go to Georgetown, come out in Georgetown and meet people. You know why? Because they are now faced with a situation where people are going to vote them out. So, when the elections are called, let's vote them out. They have absolutely no plan. This government is a failure. They have failed our people. And think about it like the gentleman said, what are you going to do? Give them another chance? Give them another three years, another five years? Do what? To punish? That is what we want? No. We want a government that can move our people forward, that has the interest of Guyanese at heart. And I can say to you that the People's Progressive Party Civic has a team of young, energetic, competent, compassionate people, along with the older comrades who are experienced to take this country forward. We've been there. We've done it. We took over a bankrupt country in 1992. Many of us were small, were young. We took over a bankrupt country and we were able to grow it to one of the fastest growing economies in this part of the world. You could remember during the 2008 um, economic meltdown, Guyana experienced economic growth. We have leaders, like I said, who are competent, committed, compassionate, and we have a plan. So, brothers and sisters, until next week, when I am back here with you, I want to encourage each and every one of you to hold this government accountable. And I say to you, reject them. When they come to your community, Ask them, why are you coming now? You didn't know I, I, I existed four years ago or for the past four years? Reject them. Reject them. Turn your backs on them. And for those folks who thought change was coming in 2015, you've seen the change. It is the change for the worst. You have a chance very soon when we have the next elections to make a difference. And I encourage you, I implore you to come join us in the People's Progressive Party. Come join us. Let us together move this country forward. That is our responsibility. And that is what political parties and politicians should do. Not getting there and, 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 and start taking money and start ignoring people and neglecting people and so forth. All right? So until next week, I want to say thanks for being part of the program. I know you guys are going to go out tomorrow and on Monday to fly your kites. I want to wish you all the best and, and happy Easter. But also I want to encourage you to be cautious, to be careful um, as you're flying your kites, uh, electric wires. Try to get open spaces to go and fly your kites and be careful. Look at the kids. Sometimes they run behind the kites and they may run in the path of a vehicle or so. So be absolutely careful as we head into the Easter on Monday. Until next week, I am your host, Eddie Lane. I want to say thanks for being part of the program. And do have a good and enjoyable rest of the weekend. Bye for now.